Greetings friends, this is Hamilcar with Hamilcar Gaming, and I'm here today with the first video in my series for our campaign, Ekthrosis Awakens. Now before we get into the actual sessions of the campaign, I wanted to do some videos with several of the players who are going to be playing, and we're going to go through their characters that they've designed, and some uh, information on their inspiration and their backgrounds for their characters, but also I'm going to ask them a couple of questions um, that I think really help bring some depth to a character. Now most of them may have already thought about these things and, and others might have a good moment where they, they're not sure and I can work with them on maybe coming up with some ways to flesh out their character details a little bit more. Now to be clear, the first part of the segment is going to focus mostly on the uh, the details about their character that have nothing to do with stats or rules in a game system. I believe that this information is going to be useful regardless of what role-playing system you're playing in. In fact, it's a similar process that authors go through when they design characters for their books. So with that said, I'd like to introduce my, uh, my first player. We have Ken here, and he is going to be playing... Um, well, I'll let him tell you what he's going to be playing. Welcome, Ken. Hey, thanks. Uh, like uh, Hamilcar was saying, my name is Ken. I'll be joining this wonderful adventure as a monk, and we're going to kind of get into more about the background and everything going on there, but I'm excited and really looking forward to this. Okay, Ken. Well, the first things that I usually try to ask when things have started up is, at this point, I'm sure you've fleshed out a lot of details, so why don't you just tell us about your character idea? Okay. Um, in general, I just a little background on me. I haven't played D and D in a long time. I played in high school and middle school, but haven't really touched it since. Um, and I've been getting into a couple different streams and different media online, and really have re-sparked my want and and need almost to play D and D again. Um, so I am kind of coming at this with a different perspective than some other people who have been playing for a while and have kind of their certain ways down. Um, so the character I'm playing is uh, a monk. I've kind of always liked the idea of monks back since 3rd uh, edition or 3.5, um, but they never really played well. And looking into 5th yeah. <laughs> edition, fifth edition, I've really liked the idea of monks. So I came at this whole idea of the character as I know I want to play a monk, I just don't know what kind, you know? Um, right. So I I kind of fiddled around looking at a bunch of different uh, backgrounds, either the ones in the player's handbook that are provided for you to kind of give you a stepping off point for the character, or some ones that I found online, some different homebrew backgrounds. And I am from an acting background myself, um, me, Ken, not the character. And so I approach this a lot as more of an improv exercise. I would see the different flaws and bonds and um, ideals that were provided in those backgrounds and how they had that randomized examples, like roll a d6 and that's what you're stuck with. Perfect. And I kind of just, yeah, I kind of just went through and did a bunch of those and kind of played with different characters that would work with those ideals and bonds and etc. Okay. Um, I just want yeah. to point out that um, in my video that talks about uh, different ways that people come up with ideas for characters, this is a perfect example of what um, I like to call an archetype view, or uh, where basically you, you're not sure what you want to do, but you know that there is some sort of class or race combination or really a, a uh, traditional archetype, and you want to explore that more. And that's a perfectly fine place to start. In this case, Ken had always, or Ken had always decided that he liked to play monks. Um, he felt like they didn't work well in previous systems, and now he's exploring it in 5e. So, you know, with that as kind of a foundation, um, where did you move from there? What was some of your inspiration that you built for, for figuring out your character? Well, I was kind of jumping around. Uh, like I said, I was looking at a bunch of different backgrounds and just rolling up randomly and then jumping off of that to see, is this something that I could play? Is this something that I'd feel comfortable role-playing in a long extended period of time? And, you know, that kind of would narrow down. I'd look at one background, I'd do a couple different combinations of rolling on those charts and decide, well, 
I mean, that'd be a fun character. I don't know if I'd enjoy playing it, you know. So I, I finally came down to there was a uh, homebrew one that I found called the Aspirant or someone who aspires to be something. Okay. Um, and I was looking at it and a lot of the features seemed a little overpowered. So I didn't really want to go with that. But then looking back at the player's handbook, I saw that the Acolyte background had a lot of those same kind of feel to it. So really, I, I started off, like I said, I want to play a monk, and then I narrowed it down just from toying with different ideas in my head that would play into a character and how a character would work with those prompts of this is your ideal, this is your flaw. And right, then that so... narrowed me down. So one thing that I just want to point out that is, is very useful is that in 5th edition, the player's handbook has added a lot of these tables where you can roll or to generate different sort of things, or you can even just read some, uh, some established ideas that are already there. And that is a great resource um, to look for things. Some people go into a character and they've, they've you know, kind of got it figured out what they want to do, and others are, are kind of digging around to, to flesh out the depth in their character, in this case, Kenny used a, a very good resource. Um, he was able to use the player's handbook. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of decided on, well, I'm going to play a uh, a younger guy who is just idolizing this figurehead. And I want to be like them, and I'm just obsessed with this figurehead. Um, so like I said, that homebrew one was kind of leaning towards that, but then a lot of the pieces in the acolyte background fit into that and in the case now i was using the randomizing charts to play with and kind of get some fresh ideas but now that i've kind of honed in on a specific character archetype that i want to play i was able to look at the acolyte charts which like you said are there for kind of if you don't know what to do you can roll on it and it gives you that so then here you go here's what you're doing or it's just inspiration right there that the wonderful guys down at Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons have written up for you. So I was actually looking at it and a couple of them fit right into the character I was building. So that's okay. kind of where I started there and then I needed to flesh it out in the world. And that was my next step. Okay. So, um, you know, as you're looking at fleshing out in the world, I know that for our system, um, we're going to start in Forgotten Realms. So I assume you did a little bit of research to, to um, look into that world. And so one of the next questions I usually like to ask is, is it kind of goes along with background and origin, but more importantly, what I call the motivation for your character. So why is your character an adventurer? Why is your monk not stay with his order? All right, yeah. Um, you're right, I did do a lot of research. Like I said, I haven't played D&D &D in a while, so I was only kind of familiar with the Forgotten Realms. Um, so I did find a lot of great information um, on, let me get to it here, on the uh, Forgotten Realms wiki. Uh, there's a lot of good information on there and it, it catalogs pretty much anything that has happened in that whole area of D&D. &D. Um, so I got on there and I looked at monks and I knew I needed to find a famous, amazing monk that I could idolize. Um, so that's how I found Cain. And this is this is all coming back to why I left the monastery. <laughs> um, so I found Grandmaster Cain, who was a very famous monk and a leader of the Monastery of the Yellow Rose and the Order of the Yellow Rose, or the Disciples of St. Salars. Um, so that kind of gave me my home base of that's the guy I want to idolize, which then means I'm also most likely a disciple of St. Salar's in the uh, Monastery of the Yellow Rose. So then I, I built around, that's where I'm from, that's where I am, and they've got all this great information on here as opposed to how you join it and the, the dogma behind the monastery and all the ranks and everything. And compared to some other players, how they might approach this, they might not think too much about your past especially in the written down lore of the of Faerun and the Forgotten Realms. But specifically because my character is going to be obsessed with Grandmaster Kane, mm -hmm. I knew that I needed to have all this information in my head so that my young character who's obsessed and wants to tell you about it can actually spout off things 
that have happened. And I'll, it'll, it's a good base knowledge for me, so I don't have to make everything up. I could say, oh, yes, and then Cain fought against the, the evil Lich King, you know, and I can just go on about that. And That's fun. That's I, I think sometimes a lot of um, players don't think about the, the little things that can create um, kind of a lot of flavor in a character. Sometimes mm -hmm. characters will have a catchphrase or things like that. If you think about your favorite books, a lot of the favorite characters will have... Um, little tells or catchphrases or things like that. And so I, I actually think this this was a good idea that you've got kind of a research-based uh, reason that when you're playing your character, you can have things to fall back on as responses to things or mm -hmm. uh, or foundations for decisions and things like that. Yeah. Okay, so, um, you know, if you've, if you've got this, this concept where you have this mentor that you're following, what happens with Grandmaster Kane that pushes you to be an adventurer? Well, at the very end of the article for Kane in his life, I find that uh, there was another monk that he was trying to help um, get back into the monastery and have a redemption quest. So he created this artifact that he gave to the monk. It's uh, right down in here. It's basically a diamond that's wrapped around on your head, and it's a uh, it's a phylactery in essence. Mm. And as he gave it to him, that was when Grandmaster Kane basically left this world, and it says here that he was disintegrated. So now my idol is now gone, and the only connection back to him is this phylactery that this monk has used to go off onto this redemption quest. And that's where I've kind of left the pre-written things and created kind of my own story that has given me the motivation to leave the monastery. Okay. Um, One thing that I, I do want to point out that uh, I think is, is really good that Ken has done here is that he's taken something in the world and he's he's built a connection for his character. What What's really great about this is that for game masters... One of the things that we're always trying to do with a story is to find ways to make the characters feel relevant, to pull them in. And when characters design themselves to have some sort of motivation or back history or background that, ha that ties directly into it, it means that you easily equip the game master with something he can pull, something in his tool set that can make this feel more personal. So not to say that I will, but... <laughs> It gives me the options in a campaign to use this exact thing. I can have this phylactery come into play in some point and all of a sudden make the adventure more intense for Ken's character. And that's something that only happened because of him thinking about this sort of background and character design. 